Okay guys, here's what we're gonna try to get running today. I bought this thing four years ago. I'm thinking it was a 74 or something. And I had it running then, I got it running, but um, as you can see, it's pretty ragged out. I gave $10 for this thing and I bought two of them. I bought, I gave $10 for this one, $15 for another one. I sold the other one. A guy was going to use a motor off of it for a motorized bicycle. It's got a piece missing. Well, not really a piece. It's right here. It goes here. We'll get into this in a minute. I thought I was missing that piece. And I looked all over for that piece, this piece right here. And here it was just hanging down there. So there's a little screw that goes in there and holds this. And this is what chokes it. And unchokes it. Like that. And, uh, but the cable's kind of froze up. Um, I don't know what happened to the bolts to it. This is got a lot of water in it. <laughs> um, but it, I think I came up with a 70, 1974 on this thing, but I can't remember now. I'll go back and I'll let you know what year this is, but a lot of times they'll have a model type and code number. Your code number is what year it's going to be. Um, sometimes it's a sticker, and I think this one was a sticker. That's why I can't find it. But anyway, we're going to check it out, see if it's got spark. I'm sure I'll have to pull this apart and clean the, the, uh, the plugs or the points on it. But we're going to see if we can get this to fire off today. I broke this, that little tiny piece right there, off of here. Because <laughs> I tapped it. This was froze up and I tapped it. And when I did, I broke that off of there. So, i got to figure out a way to fix that. This is the governor. And uh, this is the, the kill wire. So when you pull it all the way back, something touches it and it'll short out your coil and shut shut the engine off. But let me get you set up and let's see. <sighs> yeah, let's see, uh, see if we can get this running. I want to talk a little bit about the oil too, so stick around guys. <laughs> So the first thing I want to talk about is checking your oil on one of these that don't have the dipstick in it. Uh, Dennis Hallbacker, check his channel out. He texted me earlier and was asking me about this. I'll show you how you know if your oil is full on this thing. Uh, if I can get you. This one's uh hasn't been checked in four years. All right, let me get a pair of pliers. Okay, let's try to get this off here. Sometimes these will break, so you got to be careful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's how you know this is a real video. <laughs> it's always good to clean around here before you take that off anyway so you don't get that dirt down in your crankcase. There we go. 
still tight. Now yours probably won't be this hard to get out, but if it is, just take some time with it. Alright. There. Now, see there's no dipstick. Now in here, you can look inside of here, and you'll see the threads where this screws on. Just fill it up until you see until you see that oil touch the bottom of the threads. And that should be fine. Just to the bottom of the threads. It'd probably be maybe an eighth of an inch down. Just you'll see it. This one is low. And try to have it on level ground. So I'm gonna have to put some oil in this thing. It is not locked up, believe it or not. So I'm going to put some oil in here, and I'll show you where to fill it to. Okay, we're going to put our oil in. Uh, what do I run in these? I run 10W30. Now, uh, the newer ones, of course, will, if they have a dipstick, a lot of them will tell you right on the dipstick what to run. If it's not under warranty, run what you want to run. And if you guys have these small engines like a lawnmower or an edger, if you turn them up on their side towards the, the exhaust, oil will leak out. So make sure you know which way you're, you're turning your engine. Okay, I can just see it right at the bottom of them threads. You're good to go. If you can see that, you're fine. So let's move on. I'll put the cap on, let's move on to something else. Now, I wanna get this little piece here put back on there. I'm gonna have to JB weld it. In order to do that, that this will come up out. But first, this is our idle screw. We gotta screw this in because there's a little tab over here. Let's see if I can show you that. There's a little tab right here. This has gotta turn back enough for it to miss that tab. And then it will come up out. that's what it looks like so I got to get this piece if I don't lose it put back on here wherever there it goes it goes on top right there so I'm gonna JB weld that that should hold it and um, let me back you out yeah that carburetors looking bad but um, what we should be able to get it to run now yeah, I'm going to put that, get that put back on there, clean that up, and put it back on there. And then uh, that'll be done. And then we'll check for spark. Okay, guys. So I got this engine tilted up a little bit. I got some uh, paper towel in there that uh, I'm going to let sop up for a little bit. And then we'll get back on it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to glue that piece. I got it cleaned up, but I'm not going to. Uh, well glue it uh, JB weld it we're just wanting to see if it'll run we're not fixing it up yet but if it, you know if it runs and runs as good as it did then you know this will be a revisit on just doing the engine up 
I won't rebuild it, but we'll clean it up and stuff. Maybe put a new muffler on if I can find one. Just remember this, this engine will be sold, so I gotta watch how much I put in it. I can't put $35 in it and get $35 out of it, or $20, that's even worse. So, I'll be back with you, I'm gonna let that soak up some of that water that's in that tank. Then, we're gonna check for spark. So here's what I was talking about. If you flip like this edge or this motor over towards this exhaust, oil can run out the exhaust. Also, if you have one of these vent tubes, like on this old Briggs and Stratton, a lot of times they'll go into the carburetor. And if you flip this thing up forward too much, it'll come out that it'll come out that vent tube and go right into the carburetor. So be careful which way you flip these things over. If you have to flip them on their side or whatever. Sorry about that. But yeah, that's what can cause oil to be in your exhaust um, to where it's like dripping and running out. Um, in a case like that, best thing you can do is start it up. That truck did not have a front end on it. Anyway, the best thing you can do, start it up, you know, set it level for 10 or 15, 20 minutes, whatever. Set it level for a little bit so that way all the oil will run. If you got time, let it set overnight so all the oil can run back down in you know to the crankcase start it up let it run full throttle don't hold the throttle full throttle but with your with your little you know run it full throttle just like if you was using the the piece of equipment and uh let it run till it quits smoking once it quits smoking check your plug um make sure it didn't get fouled out if it did just clean it up a little bit it's real simple but then after that you may still get a little smoke periodically but eventually that will go away so don't worry about it um it's not that big of a deal so what we're going to do i'm going to spray this down this choke here Put a little bit in there a little bit in there yeah, this thing will smoke for sure. There we go. Like I said, I'm not gonna hook the governor up on it today. We're just gonna see if it'll start. I gotta make sure when I put this cover on that uh, I don't get this wire touching metal. So I may tape that off. We're just gonna see if it'll run um, right now, so. A lot of guys will spray oil on these spark plugs thinking it's going to seep down in but if that spark plugs tight and you spray that you're not really doing anything until you get it loose it's not going to help you loosen it once you get it loose a half a turn or a turn preferably then you can spray it and then it'll go down into the threads but remember that's that's tight when that's tight it's meant to hold compression if it's going to hold compression any of this stuff i don't care krill oil whatever you you your favorite thing is is not going to creep down in there even after months of scenting because that is made to hold compression it's not going to let anything in it if it doesn't let anything out it's not going to let anything in it especially like 90 pound of compression let's say on a small engine up to 150 pound on that thing there's no way so but so what I just did there, I could let it sit there for months. It's not going to do anything until once you once you get enough backed out enough to where it can get onto a thread. Then yes, it will work. But just but to to spray them down because they're tight, that's not going to help loosen them. Um, so yeah, I'm still waiting on this to do whatever it's going to do. Yeah, see soaking wet yeah. so yeah it's pretty nasty down in there i'm gonna spend a little time try to clean this out a little bit this carburetor would need rebuilt and really the only thing there is to rebuilding this carburetor is uh you got a tube that goes down to the bottom into the tank sometimes that'll get gummed up and fall off and whatever 
and some of these they don't make the tubes anymore um, you got to make them but really all you get there's a little like a washer here and there's a inside of here there's a, a diaphragm that diaphragm is uh, really your fuel pump to pump it up pump your fuel up in here and then it's got a little once it pumps fuel up in there it's got a little well and that's what it sucks the fuel out of is that little well it doesn't actually suck it clear up from the bottom of the tank to run the pump pumps it up into that little well but we'll get to that later maybe if we do a revisit on this thing um, like I said it's never I'm never going to rebuild it but uh, we'll just play around with it and but today the main thing is just to get it running so let me let that sit for a little bit I'll clean that out blow it out with some air just to keep most of the stuff from sucking up I don't I don't look for this carburetor to make it sit here and run we'll probably have to do that with squirting gas and also this I don't have a this should have a bolt for this thing and it won't run right without that bolt so I'll find something to stick in there uh, yeah hopefully it doesn't come loose and fall down in there suck into the engine but that's okay uh, oh I still gotta check and see what year this engine is I'm thinking it's a 74 uh, cuz like I said the uh, wherever I put it oh it's sitting over there the stickers going off of it a lot of times they're stamped actually stamped into the metal but um, so I can't show you that another way to tell is inside this flywheel if you take this flywheel off uh, a lot of times they're inside the flywheel will tell you and this is a cast iron flywheel it's not aluminum and I think a lot of reason they went with uh, the aluminum flywheels not only for for the weight reduction but also um, these cast iron flywheels are heavy they just called them heavy the heavy flywheels and a lot of times that will shear the key just sitting there running because they were so heavy that's why you gotta make sure if you got a aluminum flywheel make sure this is very tight so uh yeah let me get this cleaned out and then we'll move on all right guys so like i said i'm just gonna put a piece of tape over this thing for right now because it's nothing to shut these things off Uh, you can just take a screwdriver and short the plug out or cover that up. So let's go ahead and put this on. I got this oiled up, lubricated. Lubricated this. If you ever start something up and you hear a, it's like screaming really loud, this is your problem here. But there's a little seal there but I shot some I turned it up and shot some uh, some of this stuff in it because I remember it doing that last time we had it running so did I have to take this wheel off or something that bolts loose so I'm guessing yes so let's take this wheel off on all right stick this wheel back on just so it's not messing with us story time back in about I don't know 2012 when I was living in Cambridge, Ohio, old cousin Kev, you've heard some stories about him before. Him and I was working on this old weed eater that somebody gave me. And it kept flooding out, flooding out. Finally, I got the carburetor to stop flooding out. But by then, it had already filled the exhaust up with fuel. We started it, and it started right up then, it was running good, and revved it up a couple times. And it backfired. 
when it did it just kind of caught on fire by the time gas was leaking everywhere i just sat it down and walked away and kev was like and i just let it sit there and burn it finally went out kev said you know i would have gave you twenty dollars for that weed eater i said well now you can have it for free <laughs> true story I found some bolts. Well, I found two. That should be enough. Should be enough to get this thing to start. There's not a lot of horsepower here, guys, but remember, it's missing that muffler over there, so we gotta be careful that we don't get a lot of gas around there, because if we do, it'll backfire. Even, with, even if they don't backfire, there's flames coming out that exhaust. So, could catch on fire. I don't want to do that. Yeah. All right, I gotta, I'm gonna go ahead Tighten this bottom bolt, it's gonna it's gonna take a minute, especially if I keep dropping it like that. We'll get that tightened up. Again, then we're gonna check for spark. Okay, now let's get to the spark. I did uh I do have a spark checker in there. Well I have several of them that'll tell me whether it's getting sparked to the plug. But when I had that off of there, I spun that flywheel back and forth and I could feel I could feel it. So I think the points are okay. So we're gonna pull this out and check it. First, let me run that across the uh, the wire wheel real quick. Okay, so I, I just ran it across the uh, wire wheel a little bit there. Let's see if this thing's gonna have any spark. You probably won't be able to see this, but I can't see it. <laughs> okay, it's kind of hit and miss. Uh, okay, let me check something. So I took the points out. This is what it was. This wire was broke off of here, so it was barely touching. That's why I was getting intermittent, intermittent sparks. So I went ahead and soldered that back on. I'm going to put the points back in. Let's try it again. Okay, guys. So we're going to be looking at this right here. Yeah, spark, and that's the old plug. I don't know if I turn it, if that'll help you any. See it? All right. So, wasn't the points. It was my kill wire where it plugs on. It goes in the points, and there's a spring that holds it up on, that holds the, the wire into that hole. And the wire was a little bit too long and it was grounding out. So it was just like shutting it on and off. All right, let me get some gas. I'll go ahead and put this in. I'm gonna use the old plug. I got a newer one here, but since this one's sparking, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tighten that down. And uh, let's get some gas. We'll put some gas in here. Is it gonna run? Yeah, I think it's gonna run. But I don't think it's going to stay running because this carburetor's in bad shape. But anyway, let's see what we can do. Okay, let's put some gas in here. Wow, that almost filled it up. Now we'll put our lid back on. Hopefully we don't have a fire. 
All right. Well, since there's no switch, let's go ahead. I'm gonna back you guys out, and let's uh, try to start this thing up. Raise you up here a little bit. Whoa. All right. Now. try to start it what do you guys think think it'll run I didn't put any gas in the carb or anything but let's try it second crank it fired Must be sucking some fuel up out of that tank, which is surprising. Oh no! Alright. No, it's too small. Let me get that fixed. Alright, let's try this again. Sounds like it has a stuck valve. Okay, let's yank his head off here. It'll only take a minute. Let's see if we got a stuck valve. I think we do. Right here. It's the intake valve. The one that's open there. This one here. It should be opening and closing. That's the exhaust valve. It's working. This one's not. So. See, it's starting to work now. It's working. Sounds a little clunky. But let's go ahead and fire it up now. I'll put that head back on real quick. I'll speed you up through that. And uh, this thing back together. All right, let's see if it'll run now. No, I didn't torque them head bolts down. This is, it's not a 500 horse 
Corvette. It's it is what it is. Let's try it. Well, that sounds pretty good. Alright guys, I didn't even put a bolt in that carburetor, so, <laughs> alright, there it is guys, uh, 1970, I don't know, let me check, okay guys, <coughs> I went ahead and pulled that back off and looked at the flywheel, and uh, it's 72, so, Providing that's the original flywheel, which I think it is because the points when I took the points out to solder that wire back on um, It still had the Briggs and Stratton the diamond symbol on the point. So I'm thinking those are original points Or close to it. Anyway, there it is One more time. Let's see if it'll start up It's cooled down now There you go <laughs> That's a good engine. That'd be a good engine to put on a bicycle. Monkey said, well, why don't you do that? But I don't have parts. <laughs> well, get the parts. That's pretty cool. I got the idle screw not even touching in this island. I always like to see how low I can get them to idle before they die. So I think... Okay, this is pretty cool. I've showed you these before. That's a gecko egg. Okay, so anyway, there you go. That's pretty cool. Um, I can't believe that carburetor's running with all that water I took out of it and had a bad smell. And it was sitting there for four years since I've had it without being run. It wasn't covered up either. I just had... I just had that sitting on it just like that. So, pretty cool. I should run a motor. I think we'll do a revisit on this, hook the governor back up and everything, and get it running to where it doesn't hesitate when you give it wide open. I, I think I can just run some cleaner through the tank, and I think that'll take care of it. But yeah, pretty cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Shea Bear's Myth Man of Legend. I'm gone for now. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, monkey's out the hospital with her mom she got something on her ankle and is afraid it might be a blood clot so 
they're just waiting on test results so hopefully everything will be all right there all right guys thanks for watching have a great weekend we'll see you in the next one bye bye and take care That runs better than that newer Tecumseh over there. Mm -hmm.